Hi, Mrs. Zapone here, and today we're going to look at units. We're going to look at the importance of units, and we're going to figure out how to convert measurements from one unit into another, and that's known as dimensional analysis, and we're going to use the factor label method to do that. And there is a tongue-in-cheek warning on the bottom which says, avoid unit conversions if you enjoy making mistakes, you have a phobia of correct answers, you enjoy solving problems in a very convoluted manner, you take pleasure in reinventing the wheel. And you are generally just a bad human being. If you're a good human being, you will like dimensional analysis. Well, strike that. Maybe you won't like doing unit conversions, but you should appreciate their importance. What are units and why are they important? Units give us some idea of the magnitude of the thing we are describing. And what do we mean by that? Well, if I said, how far is the store? And you said the store is seven. What does that mean? Generally, I don't really know what you mean by that. Seven minutes, seven miles, seven minutes walking, seven minutes driving. I mean, we generally need a unit at the end of our numbers to make them meaningful. So units are what's going to tell us what we're going to be talking about. And take the picture down below. Generally, if this person had a weight of 160, well, either case could apply. If they were American, generally we'd measure in pounds and the gentleman on the right would probably be about 160 pounds, but if they were European, probably use something called kilograms, and a kilogram is 2.2 pounds. So 160 pound European or 160 a, pers a European person with a weight of 160 would probably look like the gentleman on the left. So units are going to be important and giving us the idea of the magnitude of what we're talking about. Without a unit, we generally don't know how far, or how big, or how long something is. So we need a unit for that reason. Converting units is going to be very important. If we look at this map here, notice all the countries not in red. They use something called the metric or the SI system. They'll use Celsius where we're using Fahrenheit. They'll use kilograms where we're, we are using pounds and where we use feet and miles. They use meters and kilometers. So the vast majority of the world is using a different system of measurement than we are, different units. So it is important in today's global economy to kind of have some idea of how to get from one unit to the to another. And I guess if we look down in the bottom right and you see that speed limit says 100. And if you went to Canada on a vacation and you said, oh, yes, I can go 100 miles an hour now. And as you're getting the speed up to about 97, you're going to hear, woo, 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 woo. you're going to be getting pulled over because that speed limit is not in miles. It is in kilometers an hour. And hopefully you get a heavy fine and maybe tasered in the process. Scientists have to be careful with using the same units because we have to collaborate. We have to share data worldwide. Uh, you may find recipes. You may have to convert things from one unit to another. You might find a European chef that gives his recipes in metric units. Likewise, if you were in Europe and the weather report said it's going to be 30 degrees outside today and you decided to put on a winter jacket, air muffs, a scarf, and some boots and went outside, you'd look pretty silly when it's going to be about 90 degrees Fahrenheit outside because the temperature in Europe is generally going to be given in Celsius, not Fahrenheit. So there are some good reasons to be able to convert units and we're going to look at some mix-ups with units. And there have been some major unit conversion errors made by humans, and this is only a small sample, and we're going to look at some of these, what happens when we don't watch our units. So we have the wonderful people at NASA, the rocket scientists, the proverbial smartest people in the world, and they built this Mars Climate Orbiter, and it was supposed to travel around Mars and measure Martian climate, and kind of find and figure out the history of Mars, see if there was water on Mars in the past, which we generally think there was, to kind of look for life, see what if we can kind of figure out what Mars was like you know, millions of years ago, we can figure out, it'll help us figure out things about Earth's history as well. So generally, this was going to study Mars, it was going to orbit around it. And NASA, when they built the orbiter, you know, generally they, um, they one, one company is going to build one part of the orbiter, another company is going to build another part, one person might be responsible for software, one person might be responsible for hardware. Well, there was a mix up between pounds and newtons. So when they went to apply thrust to the orbiter and get it to where they wanted it to go, well, they basically applied too much. And instead of orbiting in where you see the blue around the planet Mars, it ended up being in the area where you see the red, and it burnt up in the Martian atmosphere. So imagine it probably took a couple of years to get this thing to Mars, several years of research and hard work, lots of people working on it, building this, 
lots of instruments and scientists are ready to collect data and, and you know test their theories and further their models and what happens well nothing we get nothing back from it and this thing cost 125 million dollars yes a unit conversion error by rocket scientists cost 125 million dollars when all is said and done i think the entire mission cost was upwards of 300 million dollars so that was a big boo-boo not the brightest day for nasa uh, Gimli Glider, 1983, Air Canada. There was a malfunction with the computer system, so when the plane had a layover, they decided to do some calculations and fill up the fuel manually. Well, long story short, they mixed up kilograms and pounds. A kilogram is 2.2 pounds, so they didn't put enough fuel in there. And about halfway through the journey, at 40,000 feet in the air, uh, we have no gas. <laughs> Generally not a good time. You know, imagine that you're up in the air. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we have no fuel. Good luck. But uh, this pilot, actually some quick thinking, he was able to land this plane in a nearby airstrip that he knew of. It was kind of a miraculous event. And oddly enough, he glided the plane in, and no one got hurt until exiting the plane going down the, uh, the emergency safety chute. It's pretty odd that a plane runs out of fuel at 40,000 feet, and no one gets hurt until they're exiting the... Uh, little slide at the end but fortunately no one was hurt oh roller coasters derail space mountain in tokyo is an example that's not a picture of this but events like this do happen roller coasters have to be maintained sometimes you know they they change from metric to english units or they might change the uh design schematic to the metric and it was a conversion error so a roller coaster ended up derailing because the bolts they bought were like one millimeter too small or too big in size L.A. Zoo had a giant 250-kilogram turtle, which they lent out to a college. And the college, you know, how much does a turtle weigh? We want to build a pen for it. And they said, well, it weighs 250. L.A.'s, LA's going in kilograms. The college is thinking that's pounds. They built a pen that wasn't big enough for the turtle. So this 500-pound or 550-pound turtle kind of broke out of its little house. And I'm sure he didn't get too far, though, because they generally don't go fast. But again, you know, unit conversion error. Uh, an American businessman was selling wild rice to a Japanese customer, and he quoted him at a price of 39 cents. Japanese guy was elated. Well, I'm getting rice for 39 cents a kilogram? This is awesome. Well, the American guy thought he was selling at 39 cents a pound. You know, we're in different countries. We're using different units. And a kilogram is actually 2.2 pounds, so the Japanese guy is expecting 2.2 times as much rice for his money. And generally, this is a big mix-up. So even in marketing and business and things like that, we have to watch our units. We live in a global economy, in a global world. We're all teleconnected. So it is important to know what our neighbors are doing and how to communicate and conduct business with them meaningfully. And the biggest, 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 one of the biggest issues anyway, medication overdose errors. The FDA, which is the Food and Drug Administration, they have estimated that medication errors cause a death a day and injure over a million people a year. And it said that almost two out of 100 people that go into the hospital for a visit are given some kind of overdose error or basically a medication error. And these are preventable medical injuries. Unit conversions are a big part of medication overdose errors, people mixing up what they're converting and what they're doing. And this is a huge, huge problem. So watching your units is very, very important, especially for anyone going in the pharmacy or medical field. And again, here's an example of what happens when we don't use units, and it's medication. A typical adult prescription of the painkiller acetaminophen with codeine in it is 500 blank. Acetaminophen is Tylenol, in case you didn't know. Uh, should you take 500 tablets of Tylenol? No, that doesn't seem right. We can cross that off. 500 grams? Well, if you do the math, that comes out to be about a pound of Tylenol. We don't want that. Ounces? 500 ounces of Tylenol would be about 31 pounds. I don't think you want 31 pounds. So kind of you can use common sense to figure out units in some cases, but generally you probably don't want to guess because what are the consequences of being incorrect here? Symptoms of overdose may include cold or clammy skin, extreme sleepiness, progression to stupor or coma, general bodily discomfort, heart attack, kidney failure, liver failure, low blood pressure, muscle weakness, nausea, slow heartbeat, sweating, and vomiting. I sound like one of those commercials selling some weird pill. But generally, we got to be careful with our medications, and we don't take the wrong amount. We don't overdose on it, and so forth. Speed limit in Canada in a school zone is 30 blank. Miles an hour, kilometers an hour, feet per second, meters per second, or yards per second. 
And I think we touched on it, it's going to be kilometers per hour. And what are the consequences of being incorrect? Well, you could result in a fine, a loss of license, or even in the worst case scenario, a loss of life or significant injury to you or loved ones or someone else. We don't want that. So there's a lot of cases. Um, if you're inflating tires and you got a mountain bike and you like mountain biking and you're, you know, measuring in the wrong unit, maybe your gauge is met for Pascal's versus pounds per square inch and you're going to underinflate or overinflate your tires. Well, underinflated tires puncture easier. They're harder to slow down. And generally, if you're going down a mountain, you know, you want to be braking efficiently. And you certainly don't want to overinflate tires because they could burst. And, you know, a tire bursting as you're, you know, driving down a mountain is generally not a good thing. So chances of serious injury or loss of life due to mixing up units could occur. And again, we'll skip through this. And food storage, food scientists recommend that produce companies store apples, cherries, apricots, and most berries at two what? Degrees Fahrenheit, Kelvin, Celsius, or so on. And if we store food at the wrong temperature, generally we're going to pick Celsius or Fahrenheit here. But I mean, if you stored fruit at 2 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 30 degrees below freezing on that scale, you're going to basically ruin your fruit. So we kind of got to make sure we use the right units when we're doing things. So hopefully this video kind of gives you a decent understanding of the importance of units. I think we all know that, that unless you actually give a unit with something, it doesn't really mean much. Uh, I just like to throw a shout out to the source book for Teaching Science by Norman Herr. Uh, I used some of those questions, the last five questions you saw were pretty much verbatim from that. And Metric Mix-Ups by Colorado State University. I used some of that. And there were a couple images I snagged from Google. So uh, You do have an assignment here, so we're going to complete this. And hopefully you have a decent understanding of why we need to use units why it's essential that all measurements be accompanied by units and you have to answer that for me. This is Mr. Zapone. I'm out.